And there's many times in my life where something terrible happened to me, and at the time, if I could change it, I would have. But retrospectively, you kind of look back and go, you know what, that was formulative for me. That's right. That is what God decided I needed to become who I became. So all of the pain and all the suffering I've ever gone through in my life ended up, in the end, building me into the person I am, and I'm proud of who I am. So if God decides I need to go back to a Romanian dungeon for however many days, then all I can do is accept it and accept his plan and accept that it's going to make me a better person. And, and So you it. see the hand of God in your life? Absolutely. I think that he is the best of planners. And like I said, if you, if you retrospectively analyze all the times in life, you wish you could have changed things. Yes. He knew better. And I'm going to have to accept that. When did you conclude that? I think I guess I always kind of knew. I was atheistic for a while when I was younger. But as you get older, you start to look at the world and understand that the thing for me was actually, I guess, a scientific principle. It was Newton's law of equal and opposite force. If there is evil in the world, and I'd like to think we both agree there certainly is, yes. there has to be an equal and opposite force, which is good. And I would like to think of that as God. Even the idea of God as a notion, even just as a concept, if that idea of God resists evil, then God is real. If you have two islands, you have two people, let's say a ship crashes, and you have two people who swim to two different islands, and one island they're atheists, savages, and they rip you apart, and the other island you get there and they believe in God and they believe they're not allowed to kill you. Even just their idea of God, God saved your life. So I think even just the concept of God in and of itself, if enough people believe in it makes them do good, then God must be true, and that's the equal and opposite force to the evil of the world. And this is how I, I view it. So I don't see how anybody with a conscience cannot believe in God anymore. That's such a profoundly different worldview from the one that we're presented with, I think. Yeah. That, do you think that's maybe the division in the West between people who, who see those forces at work and, and those who don't? I, I, think the main, I think the West is actually split between people who think and people who don't think at all. I think the people... There, there are, there's no such thing as these two opposing worldviews. I think people believe there's worldview A and worldview B. I, I disagree with that. I think there's worldview A, the good guys, which are primarily people who do believe in God, do have parameters, do believe in standards, do believe in self-respect, do know how to say no. And there's worldview B, which changes day by day regard, based on what they're told, which means they have no real worldview at all. They just repeat. And they have no standards and they have no parameters. There's nothing you can tell them that will make them wake up and go, that's wrong because they have no inherent morality. So you can literally, you can say bestiality is accepted and encouraged now. It's good for you because for climate change. And they'll sit there and go, oh, for climate change. Oh, well, off we go. And uh, they'll just do it. So I think you have a, a camp of people who, who think and you have a camp of people who repeat. And I don't think there's actually the, the opposing side to the good. I don't think function as a thinking populace at all. I think they simply repeat. It, it feels like there's, I mean, the conflict between those two groups is getting more intense. It's certainly getting more intense. And I, it was interesting for me because, and I want to be an optimist, but I lost so much faith in humanity during COVID. I really, if you would have told me how COVID would have gone down yes. before COVID, I'd say, no way. We're not that bad. <laughs> you know, like I thought the people aren't that dumb. But when I experienced COVID, it, it's actually scary. You see how the Nazis managed to do what they did. You see For how sure. they managed to put people in concentration camps. You see it. And I had a very unique view of COVID because in the first days of COVID, when people were falling over in China and the Italian hospitals were overrun at the height of the panic, when most people believed, because it was the very beginning, early stages, my brother and I had a very logical conversation and said, we're two military aged men in very good physical condition. If we die of this, the world's over. If it can kill us, it's zombie apocalypse. So why are we gonna live in fear? So we found the only two countries that were open, which were Sweden and Belarus. We had just been to Belarus. This is before the Ukraine war. We'd just been there. We decided to try Sweden. So for the first three months of COVID during the height of lockdowns, when, when Florida was closed, when it was absolutely- um, I remember. Yeah, when it was the craziest lockdowns globally, me and Tristan are in Sweden in absolute freedom. They had no restrictions, no masks, no vaccine passports, no social distancing, nightclubs are full, lunch, restaurants are open, perfectly complete normal society. Nobody talks about this anymore. Nobody talks about, wait, Sweden never did a thing. Everything functioned perfectly fine the entire time. And they don't have it. Where's their mass 
Where's their illness of severe, their winter of severe illness and death? Yes. They never had one. It's a cold country, never had one. So we were living in Sweden, living completely normal lives, seeing everyone, seeing the internet and seeing this insanity. And we're like, well, surely if we just put up a few videos of us partying in Sweden in nightclubs, this will wake people up. People didn't want to, people ignored their own eyes. That's the scariest thing about everything is that they can get to a level where with the media machine where people will genuinely ignore their own eyes. I don't understand how you can get people so brainwashed that they will see that the sky is blue and then they'll watch that the sky is green and then they'll look at it again and go, the sky's green. It, it's crazy to me, but COVID proves they can do that. And uh, that's why the, the war is getting so intense because the principled people are saying, how can you still believe in the things that you're saying? Here is all the logical empirical evidence that that is a lie. But these people are ideologically brainwashed and they don't want to take enough. They don't have the bravery it takes to wake up and accept that they're being lied to. So they'd rather just to the end of time, repeat what they're told. And it becomes more and more intense as it becomes more and more ridiculous. That's so scary. As it becomes more and more ridiculous, the more intense both sides get. Yes. Right? So what the future holds, I'm not entirely sure. But I like to believe even my current charges, I found solace when I was in jail that the thinking people are looking at this going, something about this doesn't seem right. Well, I mean, it, it is a little bracing. I mean, when I discovered, I mean, I was sympathetic to you already, yeah. um, but you know, a man's accused of human trafficking, it's worth finding out what he's accused of. Sure. And when I discovered that there was no like, actual human trafficking charge, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's not actually human trafficking, I don't care what you call it, yep. you weren't buying it, even accused of buying and selling anyone, then the next conclusion you inevitably reach is, they don't like the guy. They don't like his views. It's fine. They're going to send him to jail for that. Yeah. That does seem like an escalation. Absolutely. But if they don't like your views and you're inspiring millions of people to resist slave programming, you become a threat. Like they disgust me. But you can't send a guy to jail because you disagree with him. You that... shouldn't. But even before I went to jail, the members of parliament in the UK were talking about me and what a dangerous role model I am for young boys. 